Johnny Dollar. Don't you read, Johnny? It's Lloyds of England. George, every time I hear your voice on the phone, I shudder. Well, I, I guess I have asked you to handle some rather out-of-the-ordinary matters for us. George, they have been so wild, crazy, impossible, I sometimes wonder if you ever issue a normal-type policy. Well, it's a very normal-type policy that I'm concerned about now, Johnny. It's the insured himself who has me worried. Okay, tell me all. His name is Joseph, spelled with an F. Joseph Hentler. He's an inventor, among other things. His invention is what we've insured. It's a device, I guess you'd call it, for making some kind of boron-based compound. Boron base. The sort of thing the government is vitally interested in for its airplane and rocket fuels. Oh, no kidding. I, uh, I think you'd better run over here and let me tell you about it. Can you? Right away? When you put it that way, George, yeah, I think I'd better. I'm on my way. Bob Bailey, in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account... America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Defense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Floyd's of England, American office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Boron 112 matter. <laughs> Expense account item one, a dollar ten cab from my apartment at George Reed's office. As I walked in, he motioned me to a chair, leaned over to the intercom on his desk, and pushed a key. Sit down, Johnny. Miss Larkin. Yes, Mr. Mr. Dollar is here. Would you come in, please? Oh, yes, sir. Well, George, what's it about this time? Glad to see you, Johnny. I gave you most of the story over the phone. Well, you only told me you've issued a policy to this man, uh, Handler, was it? That's right. Joseph Handler. Yeah, and that you've insured some invention of his for, uh, how much did you insure it for? $20,000. It's a, a piece of apparatus, Johnny, that he has spent over seven years developing. Uh, sit down, Miss Larkin. Oh, thank you. Apparently, it's a very complicated something or other. I never did know much about such things. For making borax. Or more specifically, a compound he calls boron-112 for use in high-powered fuel. Sounds important. It is, at least so far as I've been able to determine. Yeah, been all sorts of government tests and experiments with these super fuels, hasn't there? Exactly. Many things formerly used purely as explosives, remember this, Johnny, many things formerly used as explosives are now being developed as fuels. Well, the perfect example is atomic fission and uh, hydrogen fission or fusion or whatever it is. Exactly. All right, now let's get down to cases. You've insured some apparatus that's supposed to make boron-112. What kind of apparatus? I've never seen it. It's all very secret. Well, now, wait a minute. How do you know this machine or whatever it is even exists? Looks to me like you've insured a pig in a poke. No, Johnny. For $20,000. Wow, Lee. No, Johnny, I'm not that much of a fool. One man, a recognized physicist, has, at my request. And mind you, this was before I'd agree to issue the policy. Understand? Go on. His name is Dr. Hugo von Brauer. Oh, I've heard of him. Yes. Well, Handler permitted him to see enough to convince von Brauer that he has something mighty important there, that he's on the right track to, well, whatever it is he's out to accomplish. Okay, okay, I'll take your word that you were right in issuing him the policy on it. But now what's happened? The thing blow up in his face or something? No, as I told you over the phone, it's the man himself I'm worried about because of something I've just learned. Like what? Miss Larkin, this is Mr. Johnny Dollar. Now, will you please... Yeah, please... I know. Gee, Mr. Dollar, this is a real thrill. I've heard so much about you. Uh, hi, Miss Larkin. Gee, won't you just call me Louise? <laughs> yeah, sure, Louise. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> Miss Larkin, will you just... Well, just tell Mr. Dollar what you told me this morning. Yes, hmm? sir. Oh, gee. Well, it, w it was like this, Mr. Dollar. A couple of years ago, well, you know, when I was just a kid, not very mature, you know what I mean? Oh, sure. Go on. Uh, well, some of the kids I traveled around with, some of them were awful immature, uh, compared to me, that is. Miss Larkin. Well, a couple of them had some pretty funny ideas about the government, things like that. You know what I mean? I'm afraid I don't. Well, like, they used to think they were very smart attending a lot of secret meetings. The uh, kind the FBI likes to keep tabs on. Now you know what I mean? Go on, Miss Lyon. Well, anyhow, this one night... Oh, we didn't take all their talk very serious, mind you, and that's the truth. We didn't think there was anything in it, just a lot of talk. Will you please get to the point? I am, Mr. Reed. 
Well, anyhow, Charlie and me. Uh, that was my boyfriend, Charlie White. At least one of my boyfriends. <laughs> I always have a lot of them, you know what I mean? Yes. Well, go on, please. Well, Charlie and me, we said, sure, sure, we'll attend one of your meetings. You know, just for laughs, you know what I mean? And what kind of a meeting was it? Oh, it was terrible. It was awful, Mr. Dollar. A bunch of people I never saw before making speeches. Yeah. Down with the government, start the revolution, you know, that sort of thing. Mm. Oh, we got out of there in a hurry, believe you me. I'm sure. You... And we were pretty lucky, too, because the police or the FBI or somebody came in after and busted the whole thing up. Hey, maybe you read about it. Uh, that's all very interesting, Louise, but just what... Yes, Miss Larkin, get to the point. All right. Well, just this morning... When I was filing the office copy of this insurance policy and I saw the name on it, oh, gee, Mr. Dollar, it hit me like a... T well, do you know what? What? That name, Joseph Hantler. Oh. It was the same as one of the fellas, an older guy that me and Charlie had seen at that meeting. Now, what do you think of that? $20,000 on a highly secret device yes. that might be to produce some kind of explosive. Exactly, instead of a simple fuel additive. Exactly the suspicion that came into my mind, Johnny. <sighs> of interest to the government, he had told me. But what government? We're, uh, we're jumping to an awfully big conclusion, George. Have you notified the FBI? I suppose I should, huh? Yeah. No, no, not yet. We, we may be all wrong about this. Oh, but Mr. Dow... We may be all wrong about the man, his apparatus, his intentions, everything. Um... Let me see what I can find out about him first. Now, whatever you say. But remember one thing, Johnny. Yeah? You may be dealing with far more than just than just this one man. So be careful. Be very careful. Oh, gee, you'd better, Mr. Dollar. You know what I mean? Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Boron 112 matter. <laughs> Larkin, secretary to George Reed at Floyd's of England, was certain she would recognize Joseph Hantler, the inventor who had ensured a secret process for making Boron 112. If, that is, he were the same Joseph Hantler, she'd met at one time at a meeting of a subversive group. Expense account item two fifty dollars deposit on a rental car. In it, Louise and I crossed the Connecticut River to East Hartford, went south to Hockenham on Route 2, then south and east on a seldom used gravel road that took us a few miles to the edge of a stream called the Salmon Branch. There in a little grove of trees, we found a windowless concrete block building, the so-called laboratory of Joseph Handler. Gee, those directions Mr. Reed gave us were pretty good, weren't they? Yeah. Handler certainly picked himself an isolated spot. Come on. Boy, this is exciting, isn't it? Now, just remember what I told you. If this is the man you met at that party line meeting, don't appear to recognize him. Just give me a slight nod to say yes or no. Yeah, but what if he recognizes me? Yeah, we'll cross that bridge again. You not see the signs on the fence? Keep out, keep out. Yeah, Johnny, it's him. You're sure? Yeah, Chief. Where did you hear me? I'd like to talk with you, Mr. Handler. It is Dr. Handler. Who are you? My name is Dollar, insurance investigator. And who is this woman? Just a friend of mine. So, what do you want with me? Well, I want to see the machine, the apparatus that Floyds of England has insured for you. No, you may not. I'm engaged in highly secret work here. Work that is worthy only of my own great talents as a physicist, chemist, an inventor works for the government. Yeah? What government? What are you talking about? The, the United States government, of course. Suppose you let me see whatever contract you may have with them. I let you see nothing. I have no contract. Oh. And I do not have any patent on my converter. And why? Because either one would reveal the secret of this amazing device before I can turn it over to the government of this fine and glorious country. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that is also why I will not permit either you or anyone else to see inside of my laboratory. So leave. Immediately. Go, get out of here. Dr. Handler, if you'll just let us... No! Do you understand me now? Mr. Dollar. Oh, hey, now, wait a minute. What's that thing for? You are trespassing on my private property. If I shoot you, I am within my rights. Now leave. Now! Do you hear me? Come on, Louise. Gee, yeah. And do not come back here. Do you hear me? Never! Same man, huh? Oh, he sure is. 
Gee, that gun he pulled on you, I, I was scared, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, what are you going to do, Mr. Dollar? You know something, Louise? I'm not sure. But I was sure by the time we got back to Hartford. I took Louise back to George Reed's office. George was out to lunch, but I stopped long enough to telephone an old friend of mine, Lee Houck, at the local office of the FBI. Asked him to meet me for a bite to eat. Sure, Johnny. How about the Hearthstone? Anywhere you say. One o'clock? I'll be there. Well. Yeah, I know what I'd do, Johnny. What, Louise? I'd tell the FBI. That's exact. Yeah, well, we'll see. I know what Charlie would do, too. Uh, Charlie? My boyfriend, I told you, Charlie White. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd better be on my way. He'd go out there and he'd kill that crazy old man. Well, Johnny, he just hates those people who are conspired to overthrow the government. Hey, look, tell George when he gets back to the Ever office. since we got drugged into that awful meeting of those awful people, why, why, he hasn't even seen those guys that persuaded he and I to go there that night. Louise. He says if he ever does see any of them, he'll, boy, what he'll do to them. Yeah, I'm sure. Now, look, I got to keep a luncheon date. Tell George Reed when he comes back that I'll see him later, huh? Then I'll see you again, Johnny, huh? Uh, hadn't you better answer that phone? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, goodbye, Johnny. Ah, see you. Lloyd's in England. Oh, Charlie. Hey, Charlie, what do you think happened? Who I've been talking to? My dream man. Item three, seven twenty, lunch for Lee Hawk and myself. No, no, Johnny, you're off on the wrong tack. I'll bet on it. What do you mean by that, Lee? And Joseph Handler is just an old crackpot who thinks the world has done him wrong by failing to recognize his fabulous talents as a chemist, physicist, engineer, inventor, anything else he's claimed to be. But if he was attending meetings of a subversive group... A meeting. We know all about that. A lot of innocent people have been sucked in on that sort of thing at one time or another. It doesn't mean that they uh, belong or ever have. You can't blame me for being suspicious, though. Uh... Isn't George Reed your contact at Floyd's of England? Yeah. Okay. Even his kind of dumb little secretary, uh, named Louise Larkin. I know the girl. Even she was at one of those meetings before we cleaned him out of town. Well, not much gets by you boys. With uh, one of her boyfriends, uh, Charlie, somebody or other. He's the kind you have to watch out for, Johnny. Young hothead. An easy recruit for a group like that, huh? Uh, more important, the kind who's liable to take the law into his own hands when it comes to fighting back at him. But you're sure old Handler is harmless? Sure. He's an erratic old coot. Liable to blow your head off if he thinks you're interfering with one of his crazy projects. <laughs> yeah, he'd probably rob a bank if he thought he could get away with it to further one of his crackpot inventions. And would feel entirely justified. But believe me, he'd have no part of subversive activity. Hey, you said crackpot inventions. George Reed tells me Dr. Hugo von Brauer okayed this present project. Uh, that's a real sad one, isn't it? Huh? Von Brauer. One of the best minds in the country. Until that breakdown last fall. You mean that he's no longer... Oh, the holy smoke. Well, sure, Johnny. If George sold him insurance on Von Brower's okay, well... How does Handley keep going? Does he ever sell anything he develops? No, he probably lives off an old trust fund, something like that. Want me to check on it? No, wait till after I've seen him again. Somehow, I've got to see that machine of his. See how badly the insurance company stands to get took. Yeah, Johnny. I think you better. Maybe he was right. Maybe the idea George Reed and I had cooked up, that the old scientist was working on some kind of bomb or explosive, was... Anyhow, my problem was to find out exactly what he was working on, what the company had blindly insured. So I drove out there again. To keep Handler from barging out with his gun, I blew the horn a couple of times as I pulled up alongside the fence. But there was no response to it. Good. Maybe Handler wasn't there. Maybe I could somehow get into the place, see for myself what was up. But suddenly, from inside the building came a couple of dull thuds. And then the whole thing began to bulge at the scene, began to... of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Boron 112 matter. Carefully, I dragged myself out from under what was left of my rental car where the explosion of the laboratory building had blown me, pushing aside a few chunks of concrete bits and lumber that had landed on me. 
and I saw them coming down the road toward me from a car parked in the trees at the side. Louise Larkin, a big husky football player type who looked as though he could stand a good bath and a shave. Well, it served him right. That's all I got to say, Louise. Any guy plotting against the United States, murder's too good for him. Oh, gee, Charlie, it sure looks like he's done for now. He must have went up with the building. Yeah, and it served him right. Oh, gee, there's not a thing left of this lap. Oh. Hello, Louise. That's your dollar. Yeah, that's right. And I take it you're Charlie. Yeah. Hiya, dollar. What do you think of that? You did a pretty good job, didn't you? What? Yes, sirree, I... Uh... Huh? What are you talking about? Was he still inside? Did you murder Dr. Handler, too? Johnny! Now, wait a minute. You think I done that? Oh, no, Johnny. We just got here. Oh, sure. Honest. Charlie was going to have a showdown with him. He was going to drag him out of that place and hand him over to the FBI. Uh, sure. What'd you think? Gee, I was worried about the old man's gun, remember? I remember. But if you think a lousy gun was going to stop me from handing a subversion guy like him over to the... Now, look... You don't mean you think I done this. What would you think? No, 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 I, I did it. Oh, was it not wonderful? Dr. Hamlet. Yes, yes, Mr. Dollar, and I want you to... So you're still alive, huh? You're okay. I beg your pardon? Well, you won't be for long because I'm going to take oh, you in. I'm going to... Quiet, 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 quiet. Mr. Dollar, my good friend, Mr. Dollar. Huh? I, I want you to meet this gentleman from the commission in Washington. Commission? D.C., Washington. Dr. Bernard Steiner. The Dr. Steiner? Yeah, but of course. I've heard of you, and now it's nice to meet you, Mr. Dollar. <laughs> this this final test, it was proof. It was final, all right. Yes, it was all the proof I need. We observed the buildup of the explosion from the top of yonder hill. The proof of what? That Dr. Handler has finally come up with a controlled power source in his boron compound of inestimable value to the country's rocket program. If so... I am a great man at last. Oh, why he calls it boron 112, I'll never know. Well, because it was experiment number 112 with my wonderful converter process. <laughs> what else? Hey, uh, if you're from Washington, mister, I... I am, young man, and I assure you the government will take over Dr. Handler's process immediately. Well, I'll be doggone. I don't get this. Neither do I, honey. Well, what about the converter, as you call it? Did that go up with the building? Uh, yeah, but of course. And now I can build for the government a big one. Big enough to serve this glorious country of ours. Yeah, sure. But you'll expect the insurance company to pay for the one you deliberately blew up. Me? Dr. Joseph Handler? No, never. I... No, I, I am a great man now. I, I am above such petty things. <sighs> I tear up that policy. I do not want their money because now, now I am a great man. They are George, full report. Payment on the policy is up to you. And if you do pay, at least it's in a good cause. Also, well, I guess you and I have both learned a lesson about jumping to conclusions. Expense account total, including incidentals, replacement of the rental car, and transportation back to Hartford, $2,431. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Shirley Mitchell, G. Stanley Jones, Harley Bear, Russell Thorson, Frank Gersel, and Lou Merrill. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.